So the picture that emerges is that simple iterated rules are capable of producing surprisingly intricate and interesting fractals. Take a line, replace it with a bent line. Take those lines, replace them with bent lines, and so on. And you can produce a really wide array of fractals. In the next subunit, we'll start experimenting with putting randomness into these fractal generating rules. But before I do that, I want to say a little bit more about the processes uh, that the computer was doing for us. So far, I've been describing these fractal making processes in qualitative terms. Take a line, bend it like this, do that again and again. But at some point, we need to formalize this a little bit so that we can write down what we're actually doing and do math with it and maybe prove some results and experiment. Um, or we need to come up with some way to instruct a computer to do this work for us. In both case, cases, uh, this requires a little bit more formalization. Now, there are two uh, related ways that this formalization is often done. One is called uh, iterated function systems, and the other is L systems, or Lindemeyer systems. And in what follows, I want to say a little bit about each. We're not going to go into either of them in any detail. They're not a key part of the course. But I want to introduce them so that you know what they are, because if you read more about fractals, you're likely to find them, to find these terms used, these ideas used, and to give you enough of a background so that you could read further about these topics on your own if you wish. So let's get started by looking at iterated function systems. So a very short description of iterated function systems, often abbreviated IFS. So an iterated function system is an iterated or repeated geometric transformation. So the basic geometric transformation is to start with a rectangle, make four small copies of the rectangle, and arrange them like this. So um, this is actually four geometric transformations in one. I take a rectangle and I shrink it, put it here. A rectangle and I shrink it and put it here. These two rectangles are shrunk, but then also rotated. 60 degrees this way, 60 degrees that way. Each of these geometric trans uh, transformations can be described mathematically. It would be some sort of a matrix operation. You would um, contract a certain amount in this direction, a certain amount in this direction, and then translate and, if necessary, rotate. So we aren't going to go into the math at all. It's well beyond this course. But you can write down matrices that do these geometric transformations. So then, once you've written that process down, you just repeat it. You take what you have from the first step, use that as input to get the second step. So here, we again do the exact same transformation. We take four copies, shrunk down, one, two, there, and then these two copies get rotated. And then we do that uh, again, and again, and again. And we're left with our old friend, the Koch curve. So this is um, one example of a, an iterated function system. And let's take a look at one other that has a somewhat more interesting and certainly less familiar um, outcome. Here's another example. So we start with a square indicated here. And we do two transformations to the square. We take the square and we shrink it down. So this big square becomes this dark square. And then we also take this square, shrink it down a little bit less, rotate it, and move it here. So we start with the initial square. We end up with these two dark squares. We add them together. So this u is a union function, thinking of this in terms of sets. So we start with a square, and then we do these two transformations, combine them to get this shape. And then, okay, so that's our function. Uh, again, it would be described with a couple of matrices that do this rotation and the shrinking and translation. Then we would take that shape and repeat. So we would take this shape and we do two things. We make a smaller copy and, and slide it up to the left. Oop. There's that smaller copy. And then we take this copy and we do what we did here. We make it smaller and rotate it like that. So we take this shape, make it smaller, rotate it like that, and we get that. Doesn't look like much. In, the, in this example, you can see right away, partly because we've been looking at the Koch curve forever, you can say, all right, I know what this is going to be. 
But here, I probably should have just shown you this, build the suspense up. It's not so obvious what's going to happen. Well, it turns out after, um, so this is step one, two, three, and then they jump ahead, I think, to five or six in this figure, one gets this really interesting sort of spiral. So this type of mathematical system is known as a, an iterated function system, and it's a combination of uh, a series of geometric transformations, usually written down in some sort of matrix form. And you can then write down um, what happens when you iterate that. And that's a well-posed mathematical system. There's some theorems about this that say that um, there's a unique and I think a stable attractor. So kind of any shape you start with is going to end up with this spiral. And then one can do um, uh, different sorts of mathematical analysis on this. So the main point of this is to just say, yes, one can mathematize these processes that I've been describing um, just, just with words and pictures and waving my hands. And there's a pretty rich set of mathematics that's used for this. I don't think that um, iterated function systems have a lot of direct bearing on complex systems. So we won't cover them too much in the course, but they're fun things to play around with. Lots and lots has been written about them. I have a couple references um, in the additional uh, resources section for this chapter, if you, or this unit, if you want to read more. And of course, you can always explore on your own. So those are iterated function systems. Another way to formalize this idea of building fractals is through something known as L systems. And L systems, as we'll see, is an algorithmic way of generating a fractal. So I think of iterated function systems as being algebraic and geometric. The algebra is from the, the matrices that's used to encode the geometric transformations. L systems are algorithmic, things that um, you could maybe more easily tell a computer to do. So um, this is a little bit abstract. Again, we're not going to go into this a ton in this course, but I thought it's worth maybe doing one example. So you know what this is about, because you might encounter this, um, th these ideas elsewhere. And this can be a start if you want to pursue this further. So uh, I'll illustrate L systems with an example. So one starts with a starting point. What else would one start with? And that's called an axiom. It's an M. And I'll denote F for this. And then there's something called a production rule. And that's a transformation from one symbol to another symbol or a bunch of symbols. And in this case, we do the following. So the rule is f gets transformed to f plus f minus minus f plus f. And this isn't something you would do arithmetic, arithmetic to, but this is a series of instructions, as I'll explain in a moment. There's some other production rules that we need, which this says that plus gets turned into plus and minus gets turned into minus. And then there would be a parameter which in this case would be 60 degrees. All right, so what in the world is all this stuff? Let me try a drawing to illustrate this. So we start with our axiom f. So this would be, this would be n equals 0. And then we replace f with this. And, well, you could probably see this coming. It's this shape again. So f gets replaced with f plus f minus minus f plus f. And what's going on here is as follows. f means uh, draw a line segment. Plus means turn to the left 60 degrees. That's where this parameter comes in. Then f means draw a line segment. Minus means turn to the right 60 degrees. So if you're, heading, you're heading this way, you turn to the right 60 degrees. Then in, there's another minus, turn to the right 60 degrees again. So now you're heading that way, draw a line segment. You do a plus, turning to the left. 
60 degrees, and then another F. So this is um, a, a sequence of instructions that tells you how to go from this line segment to this line segment. So those are the rules that get us from here to here. Now we would apply those rules again. Every line segment, F, gets replaced by this shape, and that's exactly what this production rule does. So I would take this sequence of symbols, F plus F. Every time I see an F, I would replace it with this long thing. Every time I see a plus, I would leave it alone. F gets replaced with this, minus minus stays alone, um, is left alone, and so on. So let's write that out. So this F gets replaced with F plus F minus minus F plus F. That plus stays put. This F gets replaced by this whole expression. F plus F minus minus F plus F. Minus minus stay alone and then F plus F that's going to be the same as this. So that's F plus F minus minus F plus F plus F plus F minus minus F plus F. So this long set of instructions would give us the next step in the coat curve. So we could do that and um, in this, uh, in this form of an L system, the, the shape would get larger every time. I'm going to scale it down so that it fits on top of this. So F plus, turn up to the left, plus, two turns to the right, draw another F, plus, turn to the left, and so on. So these are L systems. It's a way of just specifying symbolically this process that we've been doing all along of taking a line segment, replacing it with a bent line segment. So those sort of instructions, I think, are pretty good for people because we know when I say take a line segment, replace it with a bent line segment, um, you know what I mean, and you do this drawing and you repeat. But if we need to specify it axiomatically for a computer, this is a way to do it. Um, so those are L systems. And I should, I guess, conclude by mentioning that L systems are of interest not only because they tell us how um, a computer, how, how we would tell a computer to do this, but they also give some clue for maybe how um, uh, the set of rules to produce a fractal could be encoded in some natural system, maybe in some developmental process that makes a tree or in some genetic code or something. So. Um, but the basic lesson is, is similar to iterated function systems. Again, we have a simple rule, just taking f and replacing it with this funny expression. And if we apply that iteratively, we can make a fractal. So L systems, you can represent as L systems all sorts of other fractals. Pretty much any of the mathematical fractals we've been working with so far can be written as L systems. And one can prove a bunch of properties of these sorts of systems. Again, we won't do that in this course. That's a little bit too far afield, but there's lots of resources if you want to read more. Okay, so the bottom line is simple geometric processes iterated make fractals. You can mathematize those with IFSs or with L systems. And in the next subunit, we're going to look at what happens if we take these nice deterministic systems and add a little bit of randomness or noise to them. <laughs>